In the wake of the alleged cheating which is gripping the chess world right now, a lot of people are wondering, how do you actually cheat at chess? Because for many, it's not clear how you would even cheat if you were determined to do so. To address this question, there are two scenarios which need to be considered. The first and main scenario to consider is a player receiving information during a game. The second is a player receiving information before the game. So considering the scenario where a game is in progress, how could a player conceivably cheat? To answer this as simply as possible, if a player receives information related to their game, then this would be considered cheating, because this information could then be used to gain an advantage. Now it's not guaranteed that it would give them an advantage by the way, but it could. And the following are some examples of how players could receive such information. A player uses a chess analysis engine on their smartphone to analyse their current position. And by the way, modern computer chess engines are far stronger than any human player and have been for over 20 years now. A player uses a chess book to assist them in remembering their opening knowledge. A player consults another player regarding their game. This last example is an especially interesting one, because what if the player with whom you consulted had access to a computer chess engine and had analysed the game just moments earlier? They would then be able to whisper just a few words to you regarding the position and it could completely transform the way you play the rest of the game. Full sentences wouldn't even be needed, simply one or two words could be all that it took. Or alternatively, what if this same accomplice didn't even speak to you in person because such an opportunity was impossible to arrange? What if they instead communicated with you via some other means, such as secret coughs, think the infamous who wants to be a millionaire UK cheating scandal, or signals sent via vibrations, as Eric Hansen jokingly considered during one of his Twitch streams in the aftermath of Magnus Carlsen's withdrawal from the Sinkfield Cup. So this is how a player could cheat, and of course there are a million and one other ways as well, many of which have been voiced in the various comments sections across YouTube and other social platforms. But the need for such elaborate ideas is only even necessary when considering how one could cheat in an elite over the board chess tournament. Because if you're playing in a more minor chess tournament with less security, then of course cheating is far easier unfortunately. The same is true online. And whilst anti-cheating measures have improved in recent times, the main measure being the use of algorithms by major chess websites to detect unusually strong play, it's still relatively easy to cheat if a player is inclined to do so. And this brings us on to another important topic here, which is how do you prove a player is cheating? The answer to this is with great difficulty. You have to literally catch them in the act of doing so or obtain a confession. Computer analysis can be used to look for evidence of cheating in the moves played, but if the cheating is subtle, then again it would be very hard to prove anything using this approach. And for the same reasons that it's hard to prove that someone is cheating, it's also difficult to prove that a person is not cheating once they're accused. You could argue that even playing naked as has been amusingly discussed in relation to the Carlson Neiman case, still wouldn't prove innocence. So this is a consideration of how a player could cheat in the scenario where a game is in progress. The other scenario for consideration is cheating prior to the game beginning. One theory that's been going around in relation to the Carlson Neiman game is that Carlson's prep was leaked to Neiman before the game began. Now I don't know where this came from, but in the absence of any formal accusation from Magnus, I suspect that once again this is simply another throwaway idea that has gathered some momentum, and so I highly doubt this is true. But even if it was, whether or not this should be considered cheating is for me a particularly tricky question. For example, if on the morning of round 3 of the Sinkfield Cup, one of Magnus's seconds had approached hands over breakfast, 
and told him the opening they expected Magnus to play that day, then I would not consider that Hans had cheated. Instead, I would simply consider that Magnus had been betrayed, and at that stage, Hans wouldn't even know if the information was true. However, if Hans had done something immoral, like hack or eavesdrop, in order to obtain information about the game in advance of it being played, then I would consider that an act of cheating because he would be seeking to win in an unfair manner. A complex topic of course, and as always I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So I hope this video helps, and if you're still needing an overview of exactly what's happening here, then do check out this video on screen to bring you up to speed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.